Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Sasol has announced revised and accelerated decarbonization commitments, and Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the significance of the 2030 targets and the group's promise to be net zero by 2050. Hi, Terence. Hi, Sashni. So Sasol's previous decarbonization plan was widely criticized. What has been announced now? Yeah, they've updated and revised their decarbonization plan and extended the vision to 2050. But in focus is what they're going to be planning to do during the current decade to 2030. And previously, they were going to reduce their carbon emissions. We know Sassel's a massive carbon emitter. They were going to reduce their emissions by 10% from a 2019 base of around 64 million uh, tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions every year, and reduce that to around uh, the 57 million tons. Now, what they've announced now is a, a trebling of that figure. So they're going to reduce it to around 45 million tons carbon dioxide equivalent. So it's quite a significant change in the figures. And as you rightly said, the, the original 10% reduction was seen as far too insufficient and lacking ambition from such a heavy emitter. We know besides Eskom, which is South Africa's largest carbon dioxide emitter. Sassel, which uses coal and converts it into hydrogen gas and then uses that in its fisher troughs process to produce fuels and chemicals in South Africa, uh, is a very large emitter. In fact, Secunda is the largest single site emitter in the world. And there's a growing sort of anxiety or growing pressure, really, from shareholder activists and environmental activists for Sassel to do more. And in the meantime, we've obviously seen a lot more pressure growing on oil companies around the world too, around this issue. And a lot of net zero targets have been announced by a number of other oil majors. And Cecil now is the latest one. And what will the group do to meet the 2030 targets? Well, it basically needs to invest in decarbonization technologies. And it's going to be investing between 15 and 25 billion between now in 2030, uh, and a range of technologies to do this. But the, the pathway they've chosen, and it is going to be controversial, is to replace coal with another fossil fuel in the form of gas. And the reason they're doing that is that is the simplest way for them to decarbonize very quickly without disrupting their business massively in South Africa. So they're going to need more gas in the system and less coal. They're looking at uh, different sources of gas. Obviously, we know they have the Tamani and Pandy fields in southern Mozambique, which are depleting. And they're looking at uh, doing exploration and development there to try and extend the lives of that field. That's probably not going to be enough in terms of what they need in terms of gas. So they're going to need to invest to import gas or in partnership be the off-taker. And we know that uh, there is a private uh, terminal plan for Matola in Mozambique to import liquefied natural gas. And there are also some plans around Richards Bay. So those are two potential import hubs that could be drawn upon by Sassel. And then when they get the gas, they're going to need to have technology to reform it so that they can put it into their fisher trops technology process. And uh, that technology investment is going to be the bulk of what they're going to be spending between now and 2030 to be able to reform that gas, that natural gas, so they can use it in their FT plants. So that's where they'll be putting their money, as well as on energy efficiency projects. And then, of course, we know, not off their own balance sheet, but they will become a procurer of renewable energy. 1,200 megawatts of procurement is planned by the group, the first 600 in partnership with Air Liquide, uh, which has taken a number of their air separation plants over the last few years as Sassel has restructured. But that's really going to bring them down to this sort of uh, level that they're talking about, that 45 million tons emission level. So it's very much a coal to gas shift. So it's still a fossil fuel and therefore will probably be somewhat controversial. And beyond 2030, Sassel aims to transition to net zero emissions by 2050. Yes, I think it's really beyond the 2030 horizon. And the planning has to start now that Cecil has to reinvent itself. Cecil is built on coal, and we know they're going to transition now away from coal as much as possible and as quickly as possible. 
but they're obviously they're going to be reliant on coal for some time still, and they're going to introduce gas as what they call a transition fuel. But really, Cecil, beyond 2030, if it wants to move to net zero by 2050, has to rapidly transform its business. And really, the, the sort of building block of this new business is green hydrogen for Cecil. So this is a process where you take renewable electricity and you use an electrolyzer to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. And the, the key there is going to be electrolyzer costs at the moment. It costs a lot more to produce hydrogen in that way rather than the way Cecil currently uses, which is they use a process to gasify coal, and that's where they get their hydrogen from, a very carbon-intensive process. And in around the world, people use natural gas, and they find a way to extract the hydrogen from the natural gas. So Cecil's future is very much linked to the electrolyzer and to taking water using our cheap renewable electricity, our relatively cheap because of our potent solar and wind resources in South Africa, and using that as a competitive advantage to produce relatively cheaper green hydrogen. And then the next thing they'll look to do is to use their unique asset footprint, which is this Fisher Trop space, which we know currently converts coal and gas to liquids and chemicals, to rather inject green hydrogen into that Fisher Trops process to produce cleaner, sustainable fuels and, uh, and chemicals. And a big first ticket target or early target where they're going to really test this concept is around sustainable aviation fuels. We know that the aviation sector is a hard to abate sector. So there's no real solution. Unlike, say, for instance, passenger mobility, we know that there's going to be a lot of electric vehicles coming into the system. There's certain sectors where it's hard to use electricity directly. And this is where green hydrogen comes in. But then you can't always use green hydrogen directly, although, the, although there is research and development around using green hydrogen directly in aviation. But really, we're looking at a drop-in fuel. And a drop-in fuel would be a fuel that you take, instead of using the gray hydrogen that Cecil currently uses to produce uh, aviation fuels or jet fuel, to rather use the green hydrogen in that process and incrementally phase out that gray hydrogen with green hydrogen to produce a carbon neutral jet fuel. So I think that will be the, the early focus that Cecil has indicated they're going to pursue. And they are saying they might not only pursue that in South Africa, but in other jurisdictions too, using their unique Fisher Trops uh, technology advantage. So that's really where the whole new world or invention of Cecil, although there's this sort of rapid decarbonization, they feel they can get a quick win through a coal to gas shifting. Uh, ultimately, gas also has to be shifted out of their process, and that's where green hydrogen is going to play a major role. Lastly, Terence, what is the importance of this announcement for South Africa and Cecil? Well, for Cecil, it's an existential one. You know, Cecil is going to face a crisis as a highly carbon-intensive business of being sustainable in this new world. We know that COP26 is coming up uh, in November. There's a big push towards net zero around the world. There's also a big push to penalize companies and countries that don't meet their carbon commitments or are not decarbonizing rapidly enough. And so this is an important stay in business or stay alive sort of intervention that Sassel is making. If they aren't able to make this transition, uh, they're taking these baby steps to 2030, which I, I think will be controversial in some sectors but to sort of create the financial platform for a future business. But if they can't do it, they're going to go out of business. So that's really the importance for Sassel. They can't any longer be a coal to liquids. And in the future, they won't be able to be a gas to liquids producer. They need to find a cleaner business model. And that's what this is all about. And it's important for South Africa, given the size and the influence of Sassel in the economy as an employer, but also as a a very high tech company to sustain this business. So it's important that they have their head wrapped around this decarbonization and have a plan. And it looks like they do have a plan. Uh, for South Africa, it's important because South Africa remains a major direct investor in the economy. They're going to be sp they're spending directly in the economy has dropped massively, but still every year around 20 to 25 billion Rand a year, Sassel invests in sustaining the operations around the world, including in South Africa. 
So that's an important source of direct investment and ongoing investment. It's an important taxpayer. But also for South Africa, we need to have companies linked to our decarbonization vision. As we know, we're going to be making our revised offer to COP26. The cabinet has approved that offer which is far more ambitious than what we have made in, in Paris in 2015. In 2021 in Glasgow, our offer is going to be a significant drop, uh, accelerated decarbonization. And the two key components of that will be Eskim decarbonization and Sassel decarbonization. Whether it's enough to get us become a, a place where people want to invest to de do decarbonization and put their international finance behind We'll have to wait and see. There's a lot of work that's going on between Eskom Treasury, uh, but I think Sassel's announcement is an important supporter of South Africa wanting to transition to a lower carbon economy and wanting to be a destination of choice for decarbonisation. Thanks for speaking with us, Terence. Pleasure. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.